Hi. How can I help? That's plus three on the body. It's basically... I can you hear me? <laughs> Obviously, make sure that there's still some background there, that that, that bill's not filling it all completely. Welcome to the uh, virtual photography show, which is really, really fantastic. I'm so pleased to be part of this. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to talk to you today about a very big change in my life that had to happen last year, because as you all know, we were in lockdown. And one thing you don't know is that over the past few years, I've had my issues that I've been very honest about, where which are caused by various people doing not such nice things to me in my life. Um, it caused um, a, a big problem in my self-esteem and self-confidence. And it started to affect my photography a lot in that I would um, be almost scared to go out. I lost my connection with lots of local nature that I built my whole career on. And I became a bit of a shadow of myself because I used to travel so much as well. It kind of took away the time that I had at home to do some good photography. So I want to talk to you about how lockdown has brought me back to the wild man Rouse. That's what I'm known as on the web um, that you all know. The best thing as well about talking virtually like this is that I can present naked from the waist down and you have no idea whether I'm actually joking or not. And some of you think I'm probably not. Um, so I, I made the title for this Living La Vida Local, you know, nicked the title from the Ricky Martin song there. I'm going to talk a lot um, about what I've been doing anyway. So let's get on. Quick thank you to Olympus for allowing me to talk today. And a massive shout out to Olympus as well. Um, they have been instrumental in bringing my mojo back. They're the most friendliest company um, <clears throat> I've ever dealt with um, in this whole industry. They're really, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got hay fever today. It's giving me a throaty cough. Um, they're the friendliest people that you could ever wish to be uh, associated with. And of course, their kit has really revolutionized what I do. And that's what we're going to see as we go through. So let me, I'm going to take questions at the end as well. So if you want to put questions on, I've got my laptop here. I'm going to take them at the end. Right. Let's go through to the next slide. All right. Right at the start of lockdown, our house flooded. <laughs> so where I'm sat in now, our house flooded and we had to move out. Um, it was a really bad time for me. I have to say I had um, a, a, a pretty down week about it and down on myself. But when we moved out, we had to move into this rented barn in the middle of nowhere. We had just a couple of bags of possessions um, and the camera kit. And all we could do, as you know, during that first week of lockdown was walk. We were allowed to exercise. We we're all a bit scared. So the only thing that we could do was walk around the local habitat and see nature because I had no business. You know, I, all my trips gone, all of my business gone, stock agencies, just nothing there. So suddenly my mind was empty and I started yoga, which I've done this morning. And I also started to do a little bit more photography because it occupied my time. And the first thing I found was this barn, which was amazing, right literally two minutes from where we were staying, just walking on the main track with these little owls in it. I just walked into the barn one day as I kind of poked my nose in um, everywhere where I'm not wanted. And I saw this little owl um, right up there in the rafters. I thought, well, this is really cool. So I walked around the barn and I saw this entrance. Look at that with the date, 1763. Look at how beautiful all the stonework is and everything. I thought, do you know what? I want that. Now, unfortunately, there was nowhere I could park a car for a hide or anything. So I had to go out in the field got a uh, what they call a bag hide on you can see a small picture of it there <laughs> um, it's a really really uncomfortable thing to wear and you just fall over everything and it scares all the neighborhood dogs so be careful what you do uh, when you go around with it but it does mask your shape and masking shape is all i needed to do because i was going to sit in the middle of a field and hopefully these little owls would come out well i got there about an hour before sunrise made my way out uh, with my olympus 300 which is a 600 um, effective on the em1x um, and also with a 1.4 converter on. So shooting at about 840 millimeters on top of my flex shooter and tripod, sat underneath the bag hide, very happy. Sun came up, nothing. Then I, I kind of turned away, looked back, and there were two little owls in that beautiful Mickey Mouse ear hole. I just couldn't believe it. Now I gave the picture, well, I didn't, I couldn't do much about the composition actually, because I didn't have a zoom uh, at that time. I had my fix 600 or 840 as it was then. So this is the frame that I shot. But you know what, had I have had the zoom, I wouldn't have gone in any closer than that, because I think it's really important in a habitat shot to show what your uh, the, the habitat that the uh, animals actually live in and the context of where they live. It's a much more interesting shot. And I can always crop later on. Okay, I can always crop later on. Um, I don't need to crop exactly at that moment. But so I love this picture, the light on it is fantastic. And the quirky little owls 
were brilliant. And I remember after I took this, I felt on such a buzzy high. I felt really amazing. And I thought, do you know what? It's been years, literally, since I've photographed Little Hours. I've always, I've been offered. And I just found an excuse not to go out because I was so stressed about the business and money and all these things. That had all gone. The only thing I had stress about that week was going to the shop for the first time. You probably all remember that during lockdown, the first time you went to a shop and how terrifying it was to go to the local shop. Um, I just went in and I got loads of buns and ridiculous comfort food like that. As soon as somebody else came in, I literally fled. Anyway, there's, the, there's always some numbers down the side so you can see everything I shot at and I'll go through them as I need to. Um, now, I did the little house for a little while. We were on the farm for a few weeks. I thought, you know what, I've got to do something else. I'm sitting outside having a coffee um, and this wren lands on the wall opposite and starts belting out a song. Now, you all know the song of the wren. It's amazing. Um, I, I sat and kind of watched, sip the coffee, thought that's beautiful. And then another one landed at the other end and, and belted out a competitive song. They were two male wrens that had built nests and they were vying for females by singing. That's why the wrens sing um, in the spring. And I thought, wow, I like this, you know, I really, really like this image. And I shot it for a few days from the car, literally from the front garden. I'd get in one side, the passenger side of the car, go into the driver's seat. I don't know why I did that, why I did it the other way around. Put the beanbag on the window with a cover over the window and wait for the wrens to appear. After a few days, I got some really lovely pictures, front lit pictures, and I thought, Do you know what? It's not in my style. My style is backlight. I like, I like edgy work. I like to take something that's different, something that's a legacy. So I always think you shouldn't just take the easy. So I shot backlit in the evening. So the sun was literally, and it, and it was it's a very small period. It's 10 minutes, literally, when you get this kind of light. So more often than not, I'd sit there, nothing going on, okay? No wrens would appear or anything. But a couple of times they did, it was magic. I darkened the exposure down in the camera by a minus 1.7 stops, you can see here. You can see the, the kit that I've got, standard kit I was using. And I darkened it like that so that I could get rid of most of the background and just create a pure image. Because when you shoot backlit, you're shooting pure. You're, you're shooting without any imperfections in nature at all. You're just relying on a really good outline. Autofocus was a bit of stress because normally I use a single point. Obviously, you can't use a single point on this because it's going to go on the black. So I used a three by three square, um, uh, which gave me a really good autofocus. Olympus is really fast at AF as well. It's, it's always fantastic. I've never known it not be fast enough to do anything. It's been really great. So it's been brilliant to have um, that capability here. Bang, right in, Ren landed, wings out, singing. I, I'm not going to bother to do the song because I can't sing a note, but it was beautiful. Um, and I hope that you see this here because it's a very different picture of a Wren and quite evocative. All right, let's have a look at the next one. Now, I started to find new nature. One day I got down in the brook um, that was running through the farm and it was an amazing um, uh, brook. Uh, that was full of kind of wildlife that I'd never seen before. The only dodgy thing was these waders that I had on leaked. <laughs> so I'd have, I'd have a wet bum and legs within a few minutes of being in. But when I walked through this brook the first time, I remember seeing all the damselflies flying. And I thought, do you know what? I've never seen damselflies before in my life. And it's a ridiculous statement from a wildlife photographer. But I've either always been away or just been blind to seeing it. And I was just transfixed by how beautiful they are. Once again, I wanted to photograph in my own style. So I would sit down in the brook, put my gear at the side on a dry bag, get one camera, one lens out, and look around for portraits. Because when I start a project, and you're going to see some other pictures from this later, I always like to get some big victories in and some really good pictures at the start. I think it gives you an oomph. You know, it's like when West Ham get a goal in the first five minutes of a game. In the old days, you'd be, oh, no, they're going to lose 3-1. Obviously, now, mighty fourth in, the, fourth in the premiership, you never know. But you always want to get something really, really good at the start of a project that you do. And I look at everything as a project. I'm not a one-shot merchant. Do one shot here, one shot here another day, one shot of another species. That's not me. I like to get in strength and depth of all the subjects I do because I think you become a better wildlife photographer uh, by doing that because you understand behavior. Anyway, read next to me, really beautiful, bocky behind of the stream. And I, I looked at it with my eyes. I thought, that's really nice. I looked through the lens and I thought, wow, that's amazing, bocky. If only a damselfly lands on there, boom. Actually, it wasn't boom. It took a couple of hours for it to land in the right place because the bocky was, bocky is very directional. So when you see bocky or bokeh like this, it's very directional, okay? So you, um, you know, you've got to have every, everything in place for it to work. I used a 40 to 150 uh, lens that you can see there, really great lens, 2.8, um, to get that shot. And the nice thing is, as I was taking pictures for the viewfinder, I could see the bokeh coming up. 
and I could see that I was nailing it. The problem is I didn't see the, the prism one coming through that you see there. So I just had to take quite a few pictures and time it when it was right and then have a look at the edit and pick the best. I would rather that this uh, this damselfly had its wings out and everything else, but it didn't. It was just chilling and resting. Uh, but I really like this picture because I think it's quite uh, interesting and quite unique. Now, I have never photographed uh, a butterfly in my life. I have never done it uh, <laughs> because I basically think that I'm no good at it, and uh, which is you have to know your limitations, right? And macro, I've never tried before until now. Uh, you have to know what your limitations are. And I kind of I didn't have much interest because I was always doing something else. Well, this summer, I couldn't do anything else. And so I had lots of interest in doing new species. When I walked through this meadow, um, I'd just been deer stalking and it had gone, it'd gone okay. I'd seen a really beautiful buck. Um, and I walked back through this meadow and I saw really, really beautiful butterflies sitting down on the flowers. Now, when I shot them, I will admit, I didn't have a clue that they were marbled white. So I didn't know what a marbled white was. And I'm sorry to admit that, but it's the truth. You have to be honest about yourself. But I saw that it was a beautiful picture. Now, I don't want to shoot the, 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 the archetypal butterfly picture where you have, you know, a bit of uh, a bit of grass sticking up with a butterfly um, sitting on the side of it. They're beautiful. First thing in the morning, covered in dew and everything. That's not me. I want to shoot it in my style and I want to show it in the context of where it lives in the meadow. Because without meadows, we don't have butterflies, okay? So I wanted to show the relationship between them. So I sat back, got low. I used my 100 to 400 here, which is a really good macro lens, actually, because it focuses at 1.3 meters. And so it focuses nice and close. Um, so I could, I could sit back, zoom for uh, 400 mil, which would throw all the background out and get one of these butterflies in focus. Now, the thing is, I'm looking through a lot of foliage to get that. So I had to put the camera on my eye and duck and dive around to find a nice, clear shot. And of course, I can duck and dive because I'm a Cockney wide boy, and I. That's what they do, evidently, on the Cockney wide boy street stuff, but they don't. Anyway, so you can see this beautiful marble white, and I just love this. And of course, this is shot in my style. So suddenly I thought, you know what? I'm actually really um, engaged here with butterflies because I'm able to shoot them in my style, and they're coming out actually all right. So I started to progress. This is a painted lady I shot, and look at how dark it is. I like it, it's like the Mothman prophecies. It's actually in my garden. I did tremendous amounts of work in my garden. I've always shied away from doing garden photography, you know, it's, it's never inspired me. But now, with no choice but to do that, because we were locked down, I discovered a whole new world. I could go out and I could shoot my backlit style and, and some action and all the things I loved just outside the front door. So this one is EM1X and 100 to 400 again, close focus. ISO 1600 because I was taking flight and we'll talk about being prepared later on. Um, F14, I have no idea to this day why I set F14. It seems an excessive amount. I should have set F8, but we all uh, admit what we're doing. Um, and handheld. A lot of these pictures are handheld because um, Olympus, again, has a fantastic um, uh, uh, a stabilizer built into the camera, IBIS. It's really great and it allows me to not have a tripod. And I, I go to great lengths not to use a tripod because I want to move one time from here to here and I don't want to have to spend five minutes undoing the legs and getting it level and doing all these great things, even though I use a fantastic head up my flex shooter on top. I don't want to have that hassle. I want to be able to move and duck and dive and get the angle that I want. And I really love this. Um, I darkened it by minus two stops, you can see, with the wings coming through. The antenna just got picked up. It's not to everyone's style. That's fine because it's to my style. And that's the most important thing when you shoot. You have to keep your own vision and style. Andy Rouse and flowers. I began to shoot flowers. Well, it's actually a really beautiful field of dandelions that I actually had right in front of me. Um, it was amazing, okay, at sunset. The sun would set right into the horizon. And when I was out one night, just mooching, looking for deer or foxes or something coming by, I saw the backlight on these uh, amazing dandelions. I thought I could do something with that. So I laid flat down in the grass with my 300 so I, I could compress the image. And I shot a dandelion against the setting sun because what I wanted to do was make it look slightly African almost, hence I got my African top on today. I wanted to make it a bit savannah like and not like the standard flower photography that you see. Um, I shot it at minus two to create the silhouette that you see to give it a little bit more atmosphere. And I think that it's really interesting lying down flat in the grass, looking along the grass. So you've got grass in the foreground as well. Autofocus is not a problem because you've got tremendous contrast on it. So it's always going to focus uh, on the dandelion. And the nice thing is, of course, what you see is what you get on the mirrorless camera on the Olympus system. I can see exactly what I'm shooting 
um, 100% while I'm shooting um, all the time. So I know that if my image is too bright, too dark, composition's off, whatever, um, I know that I can instantly change it because it's showing me it on the back of the screen. And it was really interesting um, that I started to do flowers, flowers. I also started to do lots of macro. And this is my kind of style of macro. Like I said, I'm not in, in I'm into a different style of macro, okay? And, and it's the macro that I feel I want to shoot. Uh, we were out walking along a disused railway line and the sun was raking through. And I always look when the sun is raking through in case there's a deer uh, in the light, my passion, deer and hares, in case there's a deer sitting there or a barn owl caught in the field backlit or something. Well, there were none of those things, but I looked to my feet and I could see a mayfly um, grabbing onto this stalk. And I thought, oh, that's really nice. I got down really low, had you know my 60 mil macro, which is like literally that big, um, which sits right in my pocket. It's fantastic. So I put that on, got close, and I managed to get the mayfly parallel. That's the big problem with macro. You've got to get everything so parallel. So I managed to get it really nicely parallel. The exposure was already darkened down because I was shooting into the sun with the Olympus metering system. So I darkened it a little bit more, minus 0.7, got tremendous light, which means, you know, I could easily hold it still anyway. And I took this really, really cool image. And again, this is a, it's a macro image in my style. And I say this to everybody, you know, that will listen, you must find images that are in your style. You must find pictures that are in your style that you like, and you must stick to that style and you must shoot that style okay it's really really important not to change your style find where you are find what you love to do stick to it ignore the negative ne negativity or as i call them the oxygen thieves the one thing i've learned during lockdown is that i just believe in myself and i do these days what makes me happy i don't chase social media likes i don't care about that anymore um, i just deal with the people that i know that have supported me that have been great and that's what i do and that's what you should do as well too many people get influenced by critics on social media don't do that go your own way it's what i teach all of my wild branch club and, and it's what I want to uh, hopefully pass on to you today. I went to I went to forward the slide there. And I got remember I got an auto clicker here. Now some of the Olympus tech is fantastic for macro. This is the internal focus stack and the great Geraint Thomas um, um, Radford Thomas uh, macro photographer um, Olympus macro photographer helped me out uh, with some of the settings and how to do this. And the basic idea is that a focus stack you take lots of pictures uh, in in uh, in a sequence and then combine them together so you get a much higher uh, depth of field on a picture it's really really great technique you can either do it on you know on the on the workstation with all the raw files or olympus give you an internal focus stack where it gives you those raw files or it gives you a combined high res jpeg of those raw files in camera well my macro is a uh, kind of minimum uh, input uh, maximum output because of my lack of skill so I use this internal focus stack. And this uh, image comes from the internal focus stack. It's two leaf beetles. Yeah, you're right. It's the female is on the left. She's got a distended egg sac. So she's laying eggs while the male was clinging on for dear life on the back. It was so funny. You gotta think, you know, these things are, are tiny. Now on, the, on this leaf, there were like 20 of them all in a similar position. So I picked the one that was best for the light because I saw that beautiful color on the shell. Um, I set the focus stack up, got it working, looked at the image, you know, got it right. Um, took me a few goes. I've probably spent about half an hour there. Now, the thing is, you can see those antenna are moving and there's all these rules in photography. And one, one of them is on focus that you can't have any movement. What? No, this movement here is really, really cool. It shows some life in what would otherwise be a very static picture. It comes alive. And to me, it makes the image more engaging. It will make people look up and recognize what a leaf beetle is. Look at the lovely colors of those shells. I mean, I never saw anything like this before in my life. I absolutely love it. It was amazing. And, and Rouse, the macro photographer, you know, I'm never going to be the world's greatest macro photographer. But you know what? I really love it. And it's a skill that I've added to my toolkit. And on those days when I have down days, and we all have down days, we all suffer from mental health issues of some degree and lockdown has certainly uh, made that worse for a lot of people. If I feel myself, I need to go out and do some photography. I can't always find a roe deer or a hare or a barn owl, but I can get the macro and I can go and do leaf or I can go and find a spider. I can go and do something that engages me. And I think that's the really, really important thing. All right, so where are we next? Pro Capture. Oh, do you know what? Pro Capture is my, I really want to go and talk to the designer who made it um, and give them all the money I have in the world because it's fantastic. It has revolutionized what I do. Pro, um, Pro Capture records action sequences into a buffer before or after they've happened. So in other words, what you can do, if you've got a bird that's going to land on a perch, I can record that whole sequence 
I can press the button when it's landed and it will go back and record it for a second or two seconds before. And I can get all of the images that I never got because even though my reactions are good, they're not that good. So the thing about ProCapture is amazing. It frees you to do the most amazing things, take off, landings, all this kind of stuff. Now I used it an awful lot before lockdown, but in lockdown, it came onto its own with the damselflies that I was doing. And I sat down and I thought, you know what? I've done the, the normal portraits of damselflies. How am I gonna do the high action ones? I sat down and thought about it. I thought, right, you've basically got to get the pro capture of it landing on, on, on a reed or taking off. You've got to get it at a very high shutter speed. I just sat down with a wet bum in the brook and worked out how to do it because there is no such thing as can't in my vocabulary. There is no shot that you cannot do. Okay, there's nothing. I hate that when somebody says, oh, I can't do it, it's impossible. It's not can't, it's just about problem solving and finding the right tech and the right kit to do it. And Pro Capture has been amazing. I wanna show you some pictures that I shot with it. Here's a big one that I shot last year. Lots of people love this. Uh, a, a, a damozel, a beautiful damozel, damselfly, a male, a beautiful electric blue colors in flight towards me absolutely razor sharp. Okay, so you can see the numbers, ISO 800, F4, three and a half thousandths of a second, two and a half thousandths of a second uh, with the 300 mil lens. Using Pro Capture. When I got this, I was like, you know, mini fist pump. I was doing massive fist pumps and jumping round and, and bouncing round. Um, alcohol might have been involved. Um, don't try it, uh, I do try it. Uh, but I, I, I celebrated all that because it, it just felt so good. And I kind of need that in my photography. I need to find other things. And one of the things, you know, when you specialize in really difficult mammals, you know, roe deer, hares, this kind of thing, you have an awful lot of, of no-shows and an awful lot of bad days. Well, because I've been photographing more things, and I've widened my view and I've realized what makes me happy in life. I'm able to take more pictures, hopefully, that give me a, a big and I love this picture of the damselfly. I think it's really, really cool. And remember, there's no such thing as can't. Here's another shot for you. I did bees in my garden. This is actually in the garden down here. It's a little tiny meadow. It's literally five foot across that's full of flowers. I watched the bees landing onto one that was, uh, that was uh, pollinating and I worked out how to actually get them. And all the secrets of this will be in my next book that's coming out in a few weeks. Uh, but you can see here the numbers, 800 F4 um, at a 10,000th of a second. Now, you might say, well, why didn't you just, why are you always shooting at ISO 800? Why don't you shoot at ISO 200? Well, for a start, I always want the highest shutter speed that I can get. There's no such thing as too high a shutter speed. You always want the maximum you can get. I love having the maximum shutter speed I can get. And ISO 800 on Olympus gives fantastic quality images, good enough for me as a professional to send to my agents. So that's why I always shoot at 800. I love this picture. Same technique as earlier on, looking through the flowers. Everything's out of focus in the foreground or the background with just the bee. And remember, Cockney, ducking and diving around to get the nice angle through. Um, and if you don't know Cockney, ducking and diving, learn it in it because because it's Cockney in it. Right, enough of that. Um, so really nice bee there. Let's have a look at the next one on the list. Did I not tap that right? Let's try it again. Hold on. Oh, whoops, there we go. Ah, butterflies. Now, I, I told you I did some, some really nice butterfly portraits earlier, and I did. I did loads of them. I love doing it. But as always, I sit there and I want to challenge myself because I want to show the whole lifestyle and everything. So I did these butterflies um, in flight. And, you know, it, it's something that I never thought of doing. It's a green veined white. I never thought of actually doing it. But again, using Pro Capture, 100 to 400 on here. You can see the nice, it's 8,000th of a second there at minus two. Um, I, I worked out what the tail is of the butterfly. What's a tail? Well, you know, when you've got poker and you've got a great hand, well, what they say is a lot of people give it away by going, or you know, or you ring up your broker and say, buy a yacht now, I'm gonna need it. It's kind of a bit of an obvious tell, but you have some kind of tick that indicates you've got a really good hand. Well, they have some kind of tick, if you like, that indicates they're gonna take off. Uh, birds of prey do as well. They go and poo backwards and that, <laughs> they go forward, they go backwards. And that means they're shedding excess weight and they're gonna take off. Well, butterflies have got a tail as well. Once you learn what it is, and you're going to do that by trying it, okay, um, it's very easy then using Pro Capture to get them taking off. Of course, they've got to take off level with where you are, not away or towards you, because they've got to fly through the plane of focus that you've got. But, you know, it's so much fun to go out in the garden for me and try these seemingly impossible pictures and nail them. And when I nail them, I use them to inspire other people to do the same because there is no such thing as can't. And there's too many times in life we're told you can't do this. Um, everyone's got kingfisher pictures, I know, but I haven't found the kingfisher nest for years. And so I found one on the brook. And in June, it was brilliant. 
um, I was doing some really nice kingfisher pictures and it had a very nice black backdrop. So in the last hour of the light, the pond behind would go black, but the light would stay on the perch. It was really great. I used a two camera setup that you can see. The EM1X on the left there has got 100 to 400 on it or the 40 to, or the 40, maybe uh, the 40 to 150 actually for high action. OK, whereas the one on the right um, is for portraits only. Um, I, I like two camera setups. I don't like because I've got two branches. I don't like having to move the lens, which can scare the bird and also have to change the settings between one and another. I don't like that at all. Um, so I try just to do one camera setup. That for me works uh, two camera setups. That for me works really well. And you're not fiddling and changing things. OK, and I know you've got to have two cameras to do it. Um, I'm sorry, I, I have. I've bought them as well. Um, but for me, it just means I can get the best results. I can do action now that and then immediately I'm ready to do portraits. This action here on Pro Capture, it was fantastic. I had it set up on the branch. I saw the youngster down on the branch. I knew there might be some action because it was peeping away at the tree. I saw the adult flying in the distance. I got focused and I got ready. Um, I'm holding an off-camera at release and I'm just looking through the grid. Everything's ready to go. I'm looking through the hide. As soon as the, uh, the other kingfisher came in, I waited until it hit and started to fly away. And then and then I pressed the shutter. So I've been pressing Pro Capture the whole time. And as soon as it hit and went away, I pressed the shutter down to record the whole sequence. And boom, I got a lovely sequence there. And I really, really like this. All right, I'm going to have to carry on uh, quite quickly. Red kite uh, about to take off here. Again, Pro Capture allows me to do this. So I could see the kite was getting ready. It shed its load. It was getting ready to take. As soon as it started to spread its wings, I, I, I held the pro, had the Pro Capture going um, all the time. And as soon as it leant forwards and it, it, its, its, its feet left the post, I pressed the Pro Capture down and boom. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bird. Look at that beautiful light. Absolutely love it. All right, where are we now? Fighting goldfinches again in the garden. Goldfinches squabble all the time, so I've got this. Uh, I've worked out how to do it on the perches. And you can't see this. It's so fast when it happens. But, of course, shooting, you know, 30 frames a second on Pro Capture, it means that I'm going to get, well, one or two pictures maybe with something in. And then, of course, you've got to get them in the plane of focus. You've got to get them at exactly right. Shot at ISO 3,200 there. Um, to give me an eight thousandth of a second. You need something like an eight thousandth of a second to stop this kind of motion. You'd be amazed how fast they actually move. But again, I never dreamt of getting pictures like this. One, I never wanted to take pictures of goldfinches in my life. And two, I never thought I could get such high action stuff. So changing me over lockdown and thanks to the Olympus system for helping me out uh, an awful lot. And finally, this is the most recent one I've done, backlit. You've got to do uh, your own style. So I've been doing pro capture, backlit, a uh, beautiful picture there of a blue tit you can see coming in with its wings out. I just absolutely love it. It's perfect to me. Um, I've left the branch in there so you can see that it's coming into a branch. You can guess how it's done. But I shot deliberately into the light. And I think it's it's really interesting when you 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 find your own style, you're just desperate to shoot in it. And I'm desperate to shoot in it all of the time. Now I'm a stalker. Here's my stalking picture. Um, don't report me to the police. Um, I love being out, one camera, one lens, camouflage gear, field craft knowledge. Wind in my face, underneath that tree is a hare um, that I had to crawl up the field using my knowledge to get close to. So I couldn't walk, uh, various techniques you can use to get it, too many to say here, but it's my ultimate pleasure. I use the Mark III and the 100 to 400 because it gives me an 800 mil range on the camera. It's very light, um, easy to crawl with, 30 frames a second, super accurate, it's brilliant. And the, stalk, the lens is just ace. I mean, yeah, I can get slightly more range with other lenses, but right now it's the weight of this that's just fantastic. My two main species now that I'm working on are hare and roe deer, and I'm back to working with them again. And I always say to everyone, do what makes you happy. You have one life to live it. So I want to show you a couple of pictures now. This is Derek the hare, and Derek is now famous. I love Derek. I photograph Derek a lot. He's always in the same place. He's got the same kind of markings on his body. He's got a couple of scars, so I always know who he is. And I love the fact that I called him Derek. I think it's a great name for a hare. This day, um, he wasn't going to let me close. I was too far away anyway. He knew where I was, so I crawled down as much as I could, shot backlit, this lovely, lovely mist behind him, uh, minus one stop uh, to get it. It just worked really, really nicely. And I love this picture. It's very, very atmospheric and pictorial. And I've got lots of headshots of hares, but it's very different to do something like that. Here I crawled in, uh, crawled into the to where he was. I thought the light was a bit pants. And I thought, I you know, I'm just going to wait for the sun to come up and maybe I'll get some nice backlight. As I waited, the glow came up 
and it it just lit the side of his face and his ears. And I really like that. I think it's really, really cool. And I was actually very close, even though I had the 100 to 400, he came to me because um, I'd done nothing to scare him. And that's the big thing with wildlife like this. You've got to do nothing to scare them. I don't photograph my hairs from a vehicle. I photograph my hairs by being on the ground and being actually out with them. And here you can see some lovely, that's two pictures of Derek on the left. And on the right is Daphne, who is one of my local hairs here. Um, and Daphne the other week, I crawled up so close to her. She just let get me, you know, you stop, you stop, take pictures, go forward, stop. You just watch. She gave me no indication that she wanted to get up at all. Um, so by the time I got close to her, when she stood up, I actually got the headshot on the right hand side because that was the best I could do. I never thought I would ever get a headshot of a hair. But I just love it. And right now, I, I'm desperate to go out and do hares and roe deer. It's all I ever want to do because I absolutely love both of these animals. Here's a roe buck I took um, as well last year. Really nicely composed. I think the top corners there I've actually used very well with the trees in to hold it in. The sun was on that side, so I had to put the roe deer on the other side just to balance it uh, and get it. And that's the typical roe uh, shot where the roe buck has seen you and knows where you are <laughs> and is looking straight at you. The trick then is you have to know where you are with your background because you don't want to be breaking uh, the horizon. You have to be uh, um, obviously with the wind in your face so it can't smell you and you can't move. So when you add all those things together, um, I love these pictures of, of my hair. And this is, this is, uh, dears, this is probably going to be the front cover of the book as well um, that I'm just doing. Really lovely encounter with a roe deer uh, where I crawled right up to her. She didn't know I was there until the last few seconds. I quickly, um, I raised my camera up. And the nice thing um, about these cameras is they've got flip out screens. Okay, so I can raise my camera up, but I can hold the screen and change the angle. So all they're seeing is a camera with camouflage leafy gloves on. <laughs> they're not actually seeing my head or eyes or anything else. So it works really, really well. Um, and I hope you like that. ISO 800, 6.3, you can see all the numbers. But that's stalked, and I absolutely love it. This is very recently done. Um, they're in velvet. And again, it took me an hour to get into position for this, crawling up the side of a hedge, um, <laughs> shooting across. You know, I, I'm always, you can't really put your head up because you could be seen. So I, I, I watched them afar on binoculars. I knew where they were. They were led up on the side of the field. I crawled up managed to get pretty damn close. And I love the light because it's coming across. I was able to see it in the viewfinder and darken down uh, by minus one to get that effect that you see here. Um, fox hunting, this is again, stalking picture. Um, I shot this when I was testing uh, the 150 to 400. And you can see very low shutter speed, 25th of a second. Again, don't say can't. Don't say the light's not good enough to take pictures. You're a photographer, it's your job to use the light. So I used it, slow shutter speed, had the fox jumping in, really like that. I'm getting close to the end, so I've got to carry on. Um, I use the internal ND filter. I don't use it much because I'm not a, a landscape photographer, but there's an awful lot of features in the Olympus I don't use, really good tech stuff. But here I use the internal um, ND filter to slow the shutter speed right down. You can see there it's a 13th of a second. I kept it steady by using the internal um, IBIS. And I got this lovely effect of the water there. And luckily the Dunlin stayed absolutely static. I really love that picture. I think it shows that once you get to know the internal tech, of all of these cameras that Olympus make, they give you so many tools to use, no matter what your genre of photography is. It's just the most fantastic system. I hope you can feel that I'm quite enthused by it. All right, a few hints and tips to end. One, keep your shutter speeds high. Don't think, oh, because there's sunlight uh, and I've got a little bit of light, 500 of a second, I'm gonna reduce my, my ISO down because I don't need all that. Don't do that. Keep your ISO high, keep your shutter speed high because you don't know what happens. In this picture, I didn't know what was gonna happen at all. So luckily I waited for the Kingfisher to come in and I had a high shutter speed so I could get it. Use your garden, gardens are great. Right now we can't go out, we're on lockdown. Tons of wildlife. This was taken in the garden on a hide, nice and low angle, loads of peanuts on the lawn, fed them continuously like I like feed everything. It works. Again, uh, EM1X and 300 mil. You can see all the numbers. Lovely gray squirrel there. Don't crowd your pictures. Sometimes it's nice to take portraits. Other times it's really nice to give uh, to give roe deer space. And I love having space in pictures. It really, really works, I think, really, really well. So here I deliberately gave her some space to breathe, again, with 100 to uh, 400, which is a fantastic tool. So I can zoom in. Um, and get some closer shots, or I can zoom out and compose it how I want. And I love composing it like this. And you can tell this is a stalking picture because it's low angle looking down and looking um, across. Why my Olympus is so cool? Well, I try to not make this. I'm not an ambassador of any kind with Olympus. I'm independent and I use Olympus just because I think it's the best for what I do. And I hope that you can see that it really has changed my photography um, for the better. So this is a obviously green veined white on our sedum in the garden. 
I love it because it's got really good silent operation. Um, the Pro Capture ND filter, it's fantastic. The IBIS is great. It forgives my wobble when I'm out stalking because remember, I'm a hand holder. The AF just works. It, it works without any settings or gimmicks and that. It just works really well. It's very tough and waterproof as well. So I can be out in all weathers. Um, I held the camera um, when I did gannets this year right against the, the sea. It got covered by waves and it has recovered and carried on when other times in the past my cameras have been destroyed. And it, it's really light, flexible. All this tech, it allows me to challenge and push myself and it allows me to do much better photography, I think. All right. So photography and mental health is very important. And I've definitely changed a lot during lockdown. And I think you, you, you really have to realize how important mental health is for your life because we all have down days and we all have days where we're down on ourselves and down on others whether it's sports or anything else work whatever causes it you need to make time for you because in our busy lives we don't have time for you so you need to make time for you get out into nature get out with your camera it's a free counseling service it makes you feel great because photography is always fun and no stress if you're struggling it's okay to talk about it okay don't don't hold it in men are the worst at this don't hold it in. get help get help professionally, get help from friends. If you know someone that's struggling as well and having difficulties, please give them a call and help them uh, because I'm very lucky that I've got a fantastic network of friends these days that have really helped me through lockdown and, and got me back to the way I want to be. Um, that's me rounding up three minutes to go so I can take some questions, which is good. I'm um, just so you know, I've got a conference in two weeks time. Um, so uh, hopefully you've been inspired by this wonderful conference that Future have put on for us. Um, uh, but I've also got a, a conference there that's going to talk about light painting, wildlife, bird photography and stuff. That's the kind of kit I use. I've got the Wild Bunch, which is an online club for photography, uh, which is brilliant. I've just set them a challenge to do robins. And that's it. So I'm going to ask, has anyone got any questions? Now, I'm looking at the question link, but I can't see actually any questions coming up. So has anyone got any questions they want to ask me? Uh, I'm just looking now. Oh, I've got to refresh the page, I've been told. <laughs> There's probably, uh, where are we? No, I haven't seen any questions on there. Ask your questions here. Let's, oh, okay. So I'm going to, uh, let, let's get a few. Uh, I have no sound, the code. I use a Lumix, Lumix G9, but want to try Olympus. Would the EM1 Mark II be a good choice? Well, I didn't use the EM1 Mark II. I came in straight at the M1X, uh, M1X and the 3. But yes, it would be an excellent choice because it has loads of really good tech on it. Obviously, I'll recommend the, the EM1 uh, Mark III um, and also the EMX, but the Mark II is excellent and it's really good to pick them up um, on the second hand market. So you can get them around. There's always really good deals. So, yeah, brilliant, Ian. Mick, where did you get your top from? It's better than a West Ham top. Thanks, mate. I much appreciate that. Uh, Sonar, I've been following you since, your, since my dad met you in Bandavgar. I remember many years ago. I remember that. Um, do you recommend me upgrading my equipment too? I currently use Canon 7D and 100 to 400. So now I'll come to Olympus, my friend. Um, I will. I, I don't tell people, many people that, but you won't regret it. Not only is it a fantastic company, but the kit is great. And you've got people like me and other ambassadors, all the ambassadors out there who are very approachable. And Olympus do lots of great social media. The Coffee with the Claire's is brilliant. They're awesome at social media. I've never known any company put so much effort into it. And yet it's so fun and light and um, oh, just brilliant to have. Andy, uh, I haven't done well with bird tracking. I'll, I, Simon, I'll email you about bird tracking separately. I use it for everything that I do, but you've got to use bird tracking um, for when you know it's going to work. Thanks, Ben. Same great advice. Kirsty, what do you use to edit your images? What I use uh, Photo Mechanic for the culling, and then I use Photoshop uh, purely. I don't use Lightroom. I, I don't want to use Lightroom, so I just use Photoshop. I'm an old school person. Hi, Frank. Have you found any limitations in the Olympus system? Absolutely not. Um, Olympus system has freed me to do whatever I want, Frank. Um, and my images are published around the world with my agents, the most exacting calendar clients in the world, A3, A2 calendars, which is the hardest thing to get the quality for. And I've had loads of my Olympus work used for that. And initially at the start, I had doubts. About, thank you. Initially at the start, I had doubts about micro four thirds, but I have no doubts now. I've had so many images published. It's not affected my business at all. But my photography, it's improved no end of my creativity. Have you five tried focus stacking? That's in the presentation, Frank. I just spot, yes, I do. Um, backlit shots, what exposure do you use? Spot matrix. I use the Olympus default, whatever it is. Everyone likes what I'm saying. Very funny subtitles, yeah. Uh, the beetle colors match your top. Uh, great to see you get back into photography. Oh, it's really nice. Do you use focus priority, RIS priority? I use focus priority uh, there, and Anil. 
um, because I think I want to focus more than the IS. I can hold it steady. I know you shoot ISO 800 F4. Is that much your starting point? It is, apart from on this 100 to 400, where it's 6.3. But on the new lens, 150 to 400, it's going to be uh, on 4.5. And I'm getting told to probably going to go. Social media is at Wild Man Rouse. Come and follow me on Facebook, please. You can ask me some questions on there after today and come and follow me uh, anywhere you can find me on Twitter or Instagram or anywhere else. And I believe that's me off. Am I off?